Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on dynamic memory allocation in C language. First of all, what is dynamic memory allocation? So the process of allocating memory at runtime is called as dynamic memory allocation. So there are two types of memory allocations are there. First one is compile time memory allocation. Second one is dynamic memory allocation. Okay, we are allocating memory in two ways. First one is compile time memory allocation that is also called as static memory allocation. Second one is runtime memory allocation that is called as dynamic memory allocation. Okay. So static memory allocation is nothing but we are allocating memory at compile time. Dynamic memory allocation is nothing but we are allocating memory at runtime. Okay, now we are going for dynamic memory allocation. So we are allocating the memory at runtime or we are allocating the memory during the program execution is called as dynamic memory allocation. So there are four types of dynamic memory allocation functions are there. First one is malloc function. Second one is calloc function. Third one is realloc function. And fourth one is free function. First one is malloc function. So this function allocates a single block of memory at runtime. Okay. This function allocates a single block of memory. Second function is calloc function. This function allocates multiple blocks of memory. Third one is reallocate. If the allocated memory is insufficient, then we are again allocating memory or we are reallocating the memory. If the allocated memory is not sufficient, so then we are using reallocate function. And fourth one is free function. If the allocated memory is not used, then we are releasing the allocated memory by using free function. So these are the four dynamic memory allocation functions. First we go for uh, malloc function. So here this function is used to allocate memory space in bytes to the variables of different data types. Here this function allocates the memory in bytes based on the data type of the variables. Suppose we can take the variable int that occupies two bytes of memory is allocated. Suppose we can take a character, we can allocate one byte of memory. Suppose we can take a float variable, we can allocate four bytes of memory. Suppose we can take a double variable, we can allocate eight bytes of memory. So these all are based on Windows operating system. Okay, so what is the syntax? So here it allocates only a single block of requested memory. Whatever we want, Whatever we want the amount of memory, that amount of memory is allocated as a single block. Okay, suppose we want to store uh, 200 integers. We want to store 200 integers. So each integer occupies how many bytes? Two bytes. So there are 200 integers are there. 200 into 2 that is equal to 400 bytes. So these 400 bytes of memory is allocated as a single block. Okay, within the single block, 400 bytes of memory is there. Okay, next. 
so 400 bytes of memory is allocated so that is that is written to um, okay next one what is the syntax of mlloc function ttr is equal to cast type star mlloc byte size here how many number of bytes are there how many number of bytes are there suppose we require 100 bytes okay so what is the data type cast type is nothing but so data type so cast type star mlloc byte size we can take the example ptr is equal to cast type is nothing but int star mlloc so here byte size can be defined as so n into size of int so here byte size is n is the byte size n is the byte size okay so what is the data type is there that is int int is the data type so suppose we require 100 uh, byte size is 100 okay how many number of integer uh, how what is the data type of uh, data type so that is integer so 100 into size of int is 2 100 into 2 200 bytes of memory is allocated to the variable called ptr to the variable called ptr ptr points to the ptr points to the first byte of the allocated memory first byte of the allocated memory how many bytes of memory is allocated there are 100 byte size is 100 suppose we can take n is equal to 100 so that is byte size is 100 into size of data type is int so 100 into 2 that is nothing but 200 200 is the byte size 200 is the byte size so 200 bytes of memory is allocated as this single block okay so here ptr points to the first byte of the 200 bytes first byte of the 200 bytes of memory so for example so this is so 0 to 199 so that is 200 bytes okay ptr points to the first byte first byte is nothing but 0th byte so ptr points to the 0th byte of 200 bytes of memory 200 bytes of allocated memory okay so this statement allocates 200 bytes of memory to the ptr so 200 bytes of memory is assigned to the pointer variable ptr so ptr always points to the first byte of the 200 bytes of the allocated memory next all the dynamic memory allocation functions are uh, available in alloc.h alloc.h h it is nothing but header file alloc header file so mlloc cloc realloc free these four functions are available in the header file called alloc.h suppose it is not there in the multiple choice person so it is there in stdlib.h standard library header file okay next go to the second function that is cloc function so this function is used for allocating multiple blocks of memory multiple blocks of memory okay so it is declared with the two arguments so what are the two arguments so this is the syntax ptr is equal to cast type star cloc n comma element size n is nothing but how many number of blocks are there so what is the each and every block size so suppose there are n blocks are there so emma suppose there are n blocks are there what is the size of each block so that is element size element size is the size of the each block how many number of blocks are there n number of blocks are there okay so cloc function is used for allocating multiple blocks of memory 
so it contains two parameters first parameter indicates the number of blocks second parameter indicates the each and every block size okay in the above syntax there are two parameters are there the first parameter is n second parameter is element size n is nothing but there are n number of blocks are there element size is nothing but each block occupies how many number of bytes okay so here n is the number of blocks and element size is the size of each block so for example ttr is equal to int star clr 4 comma 2 here how many number of blocks are there there are four blocks are there what is the each block size each block size is two bytes so there is nothing but the above statement allocates four blocks of memory each block contains two bytes okay here four is nothing but so number of blocks what is the size of each block each block occupies two bytes so the total how many number of bytes are allocated so that is four into two okay four blocks are there each block occupies two bytes so that is four into two that is eight bytes of memory is allocated next so this function is used for allocating memory for arrays and structure so suppose we want to allocate memory for arrays and structures so we are using cloc function so here multiple blocks of memory is allocated so by using by using cloc function so by using this function we can allocate memory for the arrays and structures next one this function allocates contiguous space in memory so here there are uh, four blocks are there these four blocks four blocks are there each block occupies two bytes okay these four blocks are stored in contiguous memory location first block first block completed second block is started second block is completed third block is started third block is completed fourth block is started so here in this way contiguous uh, space of memory is allocated by using cloc function next one uh, realloc function so this function is mainly used for if the allocated memory space is not sufficient so then we are again allocate reallocating the memory for that purpose we are using reallocate function okay suppose uh, suppose we can take one statement for that statement we are allocating 100 bytes of memory but it is not sufficient uh, to store that statement in the memory we can require extra 50 bytes of memory so for that purpose we are we are reallocating 50 bytes of memory to the already allocated memory already how much amount of memory is allocated 100 how much memory you want 50 bytes now by using reallocate function we are allocating 50 bytes of memory by using reallocate function so there are total 150 bytes of memory is allocated okay if the allocated memory is not sufficient so then we are using reallocate function so what is the syntax of reallocate function ptr is equal to reallocate ptr comma new size now this ptr is allocated with new size of new reallocated with the memory size of new size okay new size is nothing but we are again reallocating the memory we are again reallocating the memory so that is nothing but new size now ptr is reallocated with memory size of new size so this is the new size now ptr is reallocated with 
memory size of new size already ptr is allocated with some memory but it is not sufficient to store that one again we are reallocating some memory so what what is the size of reallocating memory that is this is the new size new size is the memory size of uh, memory size of new size is the how much amount of memory you are reallocating is nothing but new size okay next here ptr is already allocated some memory by using mloc or cloc functions okay by using mloc or cloc function we are allocating some memory if the memory is insufficient or if the memory is not sufficient again we are allocating some memory by using reallocate function okay so this is the description about the reallocate function so here already ptr is allocated with some memory it is not sufficient now again we are allocating some memory that size is the new size next last one is free function so if the allocated memory is not useful so then we are releasing that allocated memory by using free function so free function is used for releasing the memory space that are allocated by using mloc function or cloc function okay so what is the syntax free of ptr so here ptr is allocated with some memory by using mloc function or realloc function so that memory is released by using free function so this is the description about the free function so these are the four dynamic memory allocation functions used in dynamic memory allocation in c language it is a very very important question so thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe my channel so develop srinivas rao